Let's get some analysis on this now from Hatem Bazian. He's a professor of Islamic law at Zaytuna College. He joins me from Berkeley, California. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Now, just a few weeks after Jamal Khashoggi's death, you wrote and published an article on your website about what you call the, quote, death and mayhem approach to governance in some modern Arab states. And you focused a lot on Saudi Arabia. In it, you wrote, they, quote, dress the mayhem and constant depravity with Islam the religious cloak of legitimacy. What do you mean by this, especially in relation to Jamal Khashoggi's murder? Uh, well, I think if we uh, can uh, be clear about the development in the Arab and Muslim world, uh, that Islam is used as a tool by, for governance uh, to cloak whatever depravity that political elites engage with in order to dress it up that they're doing it for a higher purpose. Uh, here we have Jamal Khashoggi uh, walking into a consulate of his own country that represents uh, his own nation, trying to do some paperwork, and ends up being murdered in a state uh, that the flag of the state uh, bears the uh, profession of faith, the shahada. Uh, and as such, uh, what I'm seeing not only in Saudi Arabia, but other countries, uh, we could include Egypt and uh, uh, regional actors, that Islam becomes a tool of legitimation of the continued violation of human rights, uh, continued really uh, uh, treating the citizens, if we could call them citizens, more like subjects, uh, with the most horrific type of uh, violations that mm -hmm. we could actually speak of. Uh, lastly, one said uh, for the Saudi Arabian government to say that a group of uh, officers from its own country uh, flying to another country uh, uh, and walking into a council to carry an operation, uh, it's completely unbelievable that such an act of uh, what I consider to be a major crime to be committed, uh, it is to be said that it's taken without the knowledge of anyone in the country. If they didn't know, then I would say they are completely incompetent, and therefore they should not be in the positions that they are in mm -hmm. for this to happen. But, you know, two years on, uh, with all this information that we have learned in two years, and so many, of course, believing that uh, Mohammed bin Salman is behind the murder, how has this affected anything that's happening in Saudi Arabia and how the world views them? Uh, well, I think in terms of Saudi Arabia, we have a total uh, control of the political scene inside the country by uh, MBS over the past uh, few years. So I don't expect internally there are any dynamics that will change. What made it possible for MBS to continue to be uh, in the position that he is, is that the United States government gave him cover. And I think the recent book that has been published by Bob Woodward, Rage, indicated that uh, in the conversation that he had with Trump, that President Trump protected uh, MBS uh, because he looked at the financial uh, uh, relations or agreement uh, that he signed with, uh, with Saudi Arabian government uh, that included possibly a package of $400 billion. So it was a quid pro quo in the sense that the United States government uh, protected him, did not take him to task, and suppressed the resolutions that were passing through Congress in order to actually uh, have a much more robust investigation. The other, also the European, likewise, uh, looked the other way, which really was the question, because they're constantly speaking about the human rights violations in every other place. But when their interest is at play, the interest of selling weapons, of interest of mm -hmm. having these major contracts, uh, it tends to actually look the other way. So I do actually put uh, blame squarely on the United States and European governments uh, for not uh, pursuing and actually taking the Saudi Arabian government and MBS in particular to task uh, in, this, in, in this incident. Hatem, do you believe there will ever be justice for Jamal Khashoggi? Uh, well, I, uh, I am uh, still a hopeful person and optimistic. Uh, uh, justice is not lost, as well as there is someone and a uh, group that is pursuing it. And I'm very confident that the legal uh, proceedings in Turkey, there are legal proceedings also in the United States. I think the Washington Post and some who are around uh, the uh, 
uh, uh, around the work that Jamal Khajukri was engaging in, and also confident that the new uh, organization that have developed uh, will continue to pursue uh, justice for Jamal Khajukri. It might take some time, but I'm very confident uh, that truth and justice will prevail uh, because of the type of crime that has been committed. It's a uh, uh, something that we just cannot stand by and allow it to happen. Hatem Bazian, live to us there from Berkeley in California. Really appreciate your time and your analysis. Thank you.